Good afternoon, Paul. Uh, thank you for uh, getting involved in our Business Owner Spotlight. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a bit about what you do? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Scott, thanks for, thanks for the invitation. Uh, yeah, my name's Paul Fleming. I'm the Managing Director here at Camlin Group. Um, sorry, Camlin Real, which is a division of, of the Camlin Group. Um, I've been working here for, for the group for about 18 years. Uh, within the um, in, in various forms, if you like, Scott. So um, I started off. Uh, the business used to be called Kelman um, back in two thousand and six, give or take. And I started as a as pretty much on the tools as a as a field service engineer, um, installing, commissioning our equipment throughout the world. Basically, it was a it was a global role, and found myself in places like Mexico, Middle East, and Europe. You know, it's it was fantastic. Fantastic uh, experience for me in, in my mid twenties, um, and that that business um, turned out to be a very successful business. It was in the utility sector, and, and the technology uh, was basically first of a kind, uh, monitoring uh, transformers for utilities. Um, sure. So, so that business was acquired by General Electric. Um, you know, a very obviously multinational corporation, and um, and the business spun out from that effectively as Calvatech. Um, but I had the opportunity to stay with General Electric for for a year, pretty much, um, and then as part of that role, I then took on a more sales aspect, so sales and service uh, for Europe and and the UK, um, and that again was sort of led me into more sort of commercial space. Um, within that, and then um, after a year, then I came over to was Calvatech, which is now the Camden Group. Sure. Uh, and basically, started off uh, to manage the railway division within within Camden. Um, started off with one project on for Network Rail uh, to revitalise one of the systems that we had in place there. And um, and yeah, and that was again it was a fantastic experience. Um, yeah. for the Project itself took about a year. A year to complete, um, we had to, um, let's say, uh, refurbish the equipment. So it's electronics, effectively, that we manufacture here, uh, okay. products and services as well. On top of that, um, and uh, and that was extremely successful, and that was kind of the launch pad for both my career and you know the, the common real division as it is as it is today. Yeah. So, um, what just uh, just to finish off on the uh, on the Camlin, uh, group, then what, what what sort of problems do you guys solve, and and for who then? Yeah, so um, at a at a sort of macro level, so we we develop, design, develop, and manufacture um, electronics uh, devices, switches, things like that to solve industry problems. Um, sure. Uh, that's what we really look for in the market uh, across the energy and railway sectors, um, and these are these are devices that help our customers fundamentally understand their assets, how those assets are behaving, um, how they're going to behave in the future, um, really to optimize maintenance, optimize let's say um, capital expenditure, uh, and to uh, let's say um, asset replacement strategies um, as well. So we. With our devices layered up with digital services, pretty much allow our customers to look into the future. Um, okay. You know, from from that side of things. So yeah, it's a really, really exciting place to work, and you know, it's really, it's been a great experience over the last number of years. Yeah. Um. So just on that, your experience and your your career. I mean, it seems like you know you went here and then you know just turned out really well, and then you went there and then that just sort of turned out really well. I don't. I get the sense it's not all down to luck. So what what would you put it down to? For somebody who's a bit younger listening to you, maybe somebody who's in their twenties, what would you put it down to? How have you got from going into let's say the entry level and getting all the way up to being an MD? Yeah, like it's it's been quite a journey. Um, I would say determination would be a key one. Uh, commitment, um, taking time to um, you know, understand customers, uh, deliver for customers, yes. what it takes to, let's say, execute big projects um, that have a fundamental impact on how the cost- our customers manage their business mm-hmm. uh, as well. Um, and being able to work as part of a team, being able to lead a team, um, you know, instilling good values, I would say, um, and letting that transition through your teams as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I think that, that you know, really good fundamental values. I think you know has been really the core to get me where I am where I am today. Yeah, which leads allows you to lead by example then. Pretty much, yeah. So um, like the team I have here, 
um, are exceptional. And um, we, we've built the team up um, over the last, I would say, 10 years or so, specific within the railway division. Like um, whenever I took the business on, we had one customer in one market, and that was Network Rail within the UK. Yeah. And we are now a global business um, and leading railway companies throughout the world. Uh, we just we just um, sent our first system to Australia this year, for example. Uh, we've already established business, businesses, customer accounts in North America, Europe, and UK. So yeah, it's been it's been quite a journey. So um, you know that so going from a, like one customer per for one business in one market to you now a global business. How has your mindset had to change over the last ten years to enable that to happen? Yeah, so um, our proposition changed fundamentally um, mm-hmm. within the business. So to allow us to, let's say, launch a business outside of the UK, we had to change our proposition. Um, that meant that we had to release new technology. Um, and release new technology meant we had to understand the market, understand the customer, do all our research, um, and see that um, how we're going to, let's say, scale that business o- over the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, and fundamentally, it's about putting it. It's for us. It's been about putting the customer at the center of everything that we do. Yeah. Um, you know, understanding what the key drivers are and what's going to change their business, and how you can let's say dovetail your product and services to maximize that return for them. Uh, and that takes time. Um, the railway sector, as such, it's pretty much government. It's, it's public bodies that we deal with. Sure. Um, the utility sector within our business is pretty much private. Mm-hmm. Uh, but certainly in the public sector, it takes a long time. You know that the sales cycle within our business is extremely long. Yeah, uh, and a lot of what we do is built on reputation, credibility, and being able to deliver these huge turnkey projects. Um, one of which is everybody is probably familiar with Crossrail in London. Okay. Uh, now the Elizabeth Line, like that was one of the projects that we delivered um, about five years ago, um, and it's a tremendous reference for us even to yeah. you know, today. Um, so yeah, been able been able to leverage that I would say, and been able to see it as a as a brand and as a team that other customers rely on, and you can build that trust and credibility. I think is absolutely fundamental for what we do. Because back to those core values you talked about as well, trust and credibility as well, isn't it? Yeah, well, values don't change, you know, and um, I think you know even I think Steve Jobs said that in one of his one of his key speeches, yeah. you know, you know way back, and um, I think that. Trust, transparency, openness, and don't get me wrong, Scott. Like you know, with customers and releasing new technology, we haven't always got it right. Yeah, I was. I was going to ask there. I mean, is there anything? So, ten-year journey, just you know, to, to to go from one customer to global. Um, is there anything you would have done differently? Um, it, it involved. It involved like a lot of work, a lot of sacrifices. Um. Uh, my wife would probably be testament to that, you know, like like everybody, you have a, you know, like a, a young family and, sure. support, and I traveled basically for the first two years to get the business launched up to what it is today. Um, and that, that came at a price, at a, at a personal price. Um, but one that I think I probably should have recognized a bit earlier, I took on far too much. Mm-hmm. Um, and I probably should have put my hand up to say, we need to invest, we need, we need more people here. Okay. You know, yeah, yeah, it's a common, it's a common, a common theme. That and it's easy to sort of look back with hindsight, but a common theme would be get the right people in the right place as early as possible. Would you agree with that? One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Like that's that's something that, um, as we've grown over the last you know five years, uh, we and we've doubled our revenue uh, this year. Um, is to is to fundamentally employ really really good people who have a a standout attitude to deliver for you know, working as a team. Yeah. Uh, so to you know, deliver to the customer you know, as well. So that's that that we've been very um, let's we're certainly from my point of view, I'm very particular about who we bring into the team and who we are. And, um, and again, it's their, their attitude. You know, we, we've built a good culture here. Yes, within, within our team, they're protective of that. Then and we're very protective of that. Yep. And uh, yeah, they're all they're all all very all extremely proud of them. You know. So you, so you slipped in there, you just doubled revenue this year, uh, which is obviously uh, an awesome achievement. I mean, what is there one thing you would put that down to, or is it just the back to the start of being, you know, starting with a customer, understand their value, and, and just being consistent with that? 
Um, I would say it's, it's, it's about building a reputation within, within the market. Yeah. And, um, you know, and we have some very, very good references now, you know, globally. Yeah. Um, and, and that's really stood us in, to us in good stead. So yeah. our customers might have said, um, you know, we might buy one or two systems, you know, because because we're not too sure. Yes. Um, uh, but whereas now, you know, we're looking at, you know, we, we were just awarded uh, a big framework in the Netherlands um, 12 months ago to roll out our systems right throughout the whole country. Um, yeah. and, and if you're not aware, um, the, the operator in, uh, in the Netherlands is called NS and are the largest operator in Europe. Okay. And have the, the dances. This, this is all the, the, this is all, the, all the geek facts coming out now. I can see how, I can see how excited you are. Yeah, so um, it, it's, it's, a, it's the busiest operator in Europe. And, um, and our technology is at, is at the center of their, of their strategy yeah. uh, to um, improve how they maintain their, maintain their trains. So, I mean, at the end of the day, if you're dealing with market leaders, then you know that's a rubber stamp from from for you then as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, like like within certainly within the railway sector, yeah. it's, it's safety critical. Yeah, um, you know, you know, moving large volumes of people daily on time. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you just can't. I mean, from an economy point of view, you can't get that wrong. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Like you know, and we, we built our business um, you know, within the UK and yeah. and the other system that we do the one that we have installed on the elizabeth line uh it's an automated signaling system so network rail where um do they want a resilient efficient power supply so they can maintain their network yeah. um, previously if they had a fault in the network it could take anywhere from 48 hours to restore power you know yeah. Our, yeah. Our, our system handles that within 60 seconds so it try, drives a really, really good wow. business yeah but, but you need, it's not just about the technology, you need people in the team to support that technology. Otherwise, yeah. you're not going to succeed, in my opinion. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree entirely. So, um, look, it sounds, it sounds like a really exciting um, company to work in and um, go in places and thriving. And it seems like the hard work you put in years ago now is just that sort of hockey curve. Now you're yeah. established and there's that no like and trust in the market. So what what's the next five years look like for you guys? And, and what do you think the main challenges are moving forward? Um, I think the key challenge for us is is the next five years of growth. Um, you know, I think we've put a really good foundation yeah. in, um, over the last two years, and it's really about scaling up. Um, I call it the back end, so uh, you know, processes system at a system sure. level, um, so that we can have, let's say, sort of more labor intensive tasks. We can simplify them, automate them, and start to drive process. So we can so we can get scale, um, yeah. and that that say flow of value will start to transmit down down to the customer then yeah. as well. Um, we're also looking to invest in our roadmap, um, so we can add more capability okay. uh, to our uh, technology um, products and digital services. Um, and that only comes about by you know investing, uh, yeah. investing time in the market, and investing time with the customer sure. uh, to understand what their fundamentally what their needs are. Yeah, you know, kind of what you did ten years ago. Just you know, yeah, yeah, take it up, taking that to the next, the the uh, the next stage, and yeah. um, it, it takes time to break into these markets. You know, it, yeah. it's not something that's done over a period of twelve months. Sure, it can, it can take three to four years. So, um, a question I always like to ask um, everybody, and and um, the the answers are really interesting. What? If you could go back in time and speak to an eighteen-year-old uh, Paul, what would you? What, what what one piece of advice would you give? I'd probably tell Paul to read one book. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, which is uh, like I, I've actually read it recently. Um, <laughs> but yeah, probably in general to to read more books. Yeah. Um, and and, st- and, st- and uh, broaden your knowledge your knowledge set like there's a tremendous wealth of knowledge out there uh, and use more of it to your you know to your advantage i think as well um so yeah definitely wish i'd have read a few more a few more books when i was younger um i wish i'd have got that advice as well (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah so um but no i'm I'm still you know uh, um i think as well just to be uh to be grateful for what you have um and, and to recognize that at every stage every stage of your of your life i think yeah. you know the opportunities that present themselves when you're 18 don't don't give them up you know mm-hmm. don't them. you know like that's something that i tell my three children you know yeah. today 
you know, be grateful for, for every day and live your life to the fullest. That's a good advice. Um, really exciting story. I really know, appreciate man. you coming on board and, um, and, you know, sharing that with us. And it's great to see, I would love to see local companies competing and flourishing on a global stage. So um, thank you so much for sharing that. No problem. Thank you for having me.